This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. The five stages of grief for every Michigan football fan next on this week's somber episode of Michigan Podcast. But there's going to be one team that's going to play solely as a team. No man is more important than the team. No coach is more important than the team. The team, the team, the team. Let's see for Anthony Clark. Wait for it. Yes, Clark. This is no time for that. In the pocket and a sack. Tim Jamison. Brady gets terrific. Present and a touchdown night again. Schultz just before Brazil got him. And a leaping interception by Woodson. Marble back to throw over the middle. Caught by Collins at the five on his feet. Touchdown, Michigan. On his way. It's good. He's 5'7", 179 pounds, a junior at Michigan. But Jamie Morris packs a wallop, and he delivers for Bo Schindler. And here's your first play. Pressure coming, second. It is Glenn Steele, number 81, who fought his way through the traffic. Option. And then Robinson calls his own number, and he's going to score. Oh, an easy touchdown for Ron Robinson and Michigan. win the championship again because we're going to play as a team and when we play as a team and the old season is over you and I know it's going to be missing it again Michigan. Steve Dace and welcome to this week's episode of Michigan Podcast. And yes, as we await Selection Sunday, March Madness, we are, after all, a basketball school. Michigan spring football, unfortunately, continues. And what do we do with it, given the current sorry state of the program? Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but... I've gone through this rodeo before. I've done this dance with the devil in the pale moonlight before. And there's usually five stages of grief we go through coming off of another season when you end on a giant L. That's just how we roll here. Here's the first stage of grief. It's the leave me alone, I'm baiting stage. That's right. We got a hell of a basketball team here. We're a basketball school. We're the Big Ten champs. I can't be bothered right now. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to let Michigan football drag me into another painful episode of Ow My Balls. No. I've got a team that knows how to play together with a coach that knows how to build a program and a culture and a proud alum that actually has players who love them that don't look at the first sign to bail out of here. Right? I'm going to watch that program. I'm going to watch them to the very end. So right now, I don't have to be reminded of the fact that we're rebuilding our offensive line for the third year in a row. Okay? I don't have to be reminded of we don't know who the quarterback is again or the fact we have one coordinator who's never coordinated before and another coordinator who obviously can't coordinate. I don't have to worry about that right now. I'm in Wolverine, maze, and blue heaven because we've got basketball but then eventually we will have to enter into stage two and that is the stage of refusal that's right i don't i'm busy i don't have to even acknowledge michigan football is going on right now it's a long time away they probably won't have a spring game anyway so i'm not reading any of these spring practice reports whatever those are And I feel bad for the guys that run those websites, you know, that count on your subscription dollars. And I subscribe to them too. And, you know, you want the insider reports, but right now you're in stage two. You're not even, you're not even watching 
for spring football stuff. You're not reading any of that. No, you refuse. This year, you have put your foot down. You will not hop aboard the Michigan football hype train again. You know better. You're not falling for the banana in your tailpipe. You're not doing it this time. You refuse, right? Right? Right. And then we go to stage three. This is where, this is where we buckle. This is where weakness begins to set in. And you reach the stage of skeptical acknowledgement. Now you're, you're still not predicting Big Ten champs yet. You still know that you shouldn't be doing a full scale terra firming rebuild with a coach in his seventh season. You know, but it's a slow time waiting for the bracket. What do you get to talk about? You see a couple things pop up. You take a look at them. You read them. You know it's total BS, right? Remember how? Remember Mike Sandra still was going to be the next big thing for Michigan at wide receiver? Oh, look, he just dropped another one. So you knew it. You knew. Eric All was going to be the greatest tight end in Michigan history. And then by week six last year, we were like, you know, uh, be still our beating heart when he caught the ball. You knew. You knew that this is not good for you. And you know that this is likely a big steaming pile of fertilizer. But you're okay with it. We're being consenting adults here. Nobody needs a ring on it. If you can't be with the one you love, honey, you love the one you're with. Basketball's in a bit of a lull. So you're just skeptically acknowledging that spring football is going on. You catch up on a couple of <clears throat> practice reports, but you're not falling for it. You're skeptical. You're just being informed, right? Right? Right. Until we get to stage two. Yes. Damn, basketball is over. What do we do now? Basketball's over. Whether it's the first, second, or third weekend of the tournament, eventually, one shining moment gets fired up. And now, now you got a Jones. Now it needs fixed. You know what happens if you inject that into your veins. You know. You know what happens if you tap that head. You know. You've done it before. You know how this ends. Bitter, desolate, lonely, warped, frustrated, after Ohio State names the score again, or mercifully, COVID spares you from that humiliation for a year. <sighs> That's a lot of free time, bro. What do we do with all that free time? Start looking at the maze and blue devils and angels on your shoulder, going back and forth, trying to draw you back in. You're trying to be resolved, resolute. You know that virtually nothing you see in the spring is real. You know. You know there's no such thing as the Grady Brooks Award. You know this. Basketball's over, man. Damn, what are we going to do? And then, and then you're gone, man. You're gone to stage one or five. You lose count. You're so desolate. You've lost count. J.J. McCarthy is the next Trevor Lawrence. This is the year. All aboard the hype train. Now, I've always been, I've always marveled at how a school that goes out of its way to provide no details to its fans on anything whatsoever and brags about practicing in a submarine can create such a train. But we do it, man. We're the best team in America, April to August every year. That's right. Of course, I don't even think J.J. McCarthy is going to be the starting quarterback, but it doesn't matter right now. You're all in. In fact, you're watching re reruns of Ow My Balls right now. You're so in. I'm here to tell you right now, we're not going there on this show. It might mean 30 people are watching and 29 of them are Ohio State fans, and I'm okay with it. If for no other reason than my own mental well-being, I'm hanging through. I'm hanging from a very slim thread after the last year we all have been through. I, I cannot possibly, cannot possibly look my teenage son in the eye and give him another off season of hope only to watch him eject about midway through the year. Cause we lost a game the first time we played one that actually mattered. I'm not doing it. No hype here. No buzz here. I have no predictions analysis of any kind of surprise. I have nothing. I'm dead inside right now. Dead. I am dead inside when it comes to Michigan football and I react to nothing. And I mean, Nothing. 
except that which I see with my own eyes that is done and competed for or against by the team itself. I will offer you nothing. That is my pledge. My name is Steve Dace and I'm an addict. I have to stop this. And this is the year that it ends. That is my pledge to you. A thank you to all of you that support us via Patreon. Patreon.com slash Michigan Podcast. So many of you have asked for the last few years, hey, how can we support what you guys are doing? That's the best way is to support us via Patreon. There's three different levels that you can do that. But if you just sign up for the exclusive club at $5 a month, you also get reaction podcasts throughout the year, uh, as well as uh, our handicapping predictions. And right now we're in the throes of college basketball season. So thank you to the hundreds of you that are supporting us right now on Patreon. And you're welcome to do the same at patreon.com slash Michigan podcast. Time now for the 10 minute war. And we welcome in our good friend, the one and only reasonable Ohio state fan, Mark Rogers, the voice of college football. Good to have you back with us here on Michigan podcast. Mark, how are you? Michigan basketball podcast. It, it, are you going to make that transition at some point here? We well, you know, transitioning's all the rage these days. But I'm bum. But yeah, I, I mean, we have made the full fledged full fledged transition to a basketball school. That's that's what we are here. Which is why you're here because I just walked our audience through the five stages of grief for every Michigan fan every spring, and I'm done, dude. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not. I'm not watching any more episodes of Ow My Balls. I'm out. Okay. So you're going to have to provide uh, the Michigan football prognostication because I'm dead inside. I have nothing. I have nothing to offer. Uh, no analysis. Nothing other than the season begins in September and we will see what happens. So let's let's get your take on some of the latest Michigan football news. Let's start with yet another quarterback transfer. Alan Bowman from Texas Tech coming in uh, to play for Michigan. I have watched him play several times in the Big 12 Conference. A guy that's put up good numbers when he's been healthy. He just has rarely been healthy. What do you think that transfer does to the quarterback room that right now is five-star recruit J.J. McCar- J. J. McCarthy, a guy who played a good half against Rutgers, and then a few student managers? What do you think? I think it's about security. It's about um, a safety net. For J.J. McCarthy, 10 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. Uh, he's been an accurate passer in his three seasons at Texas Tech. He had his best season as a freshman. I don't know if that tells us much about him being in regression in regards to his development, or that's more about the coaching staff or the style of offense. Right, because the coaching staff changed after his freshman year, right? Sure. Cliff Kingsbury moved on. Right, yeah. Yeah, so Cliff Kingsbury, we know what he's capable of on the offensive side of the ball. And Alan Bowman, again, had his best season as a freshman, has uh, declined since then. Matt Wells is a capable coach at Texas Tech, but passing the ball downfield is not his forte. So maybe that's all about the the, the, the scheme and the complementary pieces around Alan Bowman. I don't think he's a great quarterback, dynamic quarterback. I don't think he changes or moves the needle in any way, but uh, certainly he's capable. I really think, Steve, to go back to your assessment of this season being boom or bust, that if you're going to go the boom route and Jim Harbaugh needs to win, then you put your investment in J.J. McCarthy. So, of course you do. Overall you do. But I, I believe that you do in this spring. And you need to invest as much time and attention to his development, what he does. Well, I would build the offense around J.J. McCarthy. I would, like, zero in on what he does well, what throws he makes best, what plays he likes, what does what does he do well, and I would now the, the the offense isn't going to be just so radically different because you're tailoring it around J.J. McCarthy, but that's how I would scheme the offense. That's how I would build the offense, and Alan Bowman can adjust to that if he wins the job. But going with your boomer bust theory, go for J.J. McCarthy being the starting quarterback. I haven't seen enough. I've seen Alan Bowman play. He's he's decent, but I want J.J. McCarthy to be the starting quarterback. So what I hear you saying then is Alan Bowman will be Michigan's starting quarterback week one against Western Michigan. Yeah, yeah that's probably the way this is going to work. He falls right in line with the uh, Wilton Spates mm-hmm. and um, John O'Corns of the world. Uh, and that's probably a bit of a slam on Wilton Spates. Sorry about that, Wilton. What are your thoughts on – it's good news that John Harbaugh 
apparently doesn't care about winning next year uh, in the NFL. He's just deciding, you know, I've won enough. So I'm, you know, just, I'm going to go six and 10, seven and nine next year. So I can keep giving my best assistance to my brother to save his job. I mean, there's not a lot of families, frankly, uh, that would do that for one another. But uh, obviously the Ravens under John Harbaugh decided to take this year off and are outsourcing their best assistance over uh, to Michigan, including an analytics guy uh, who's never coached quarterbacks before, but he is now Michigan's new quarterback coach, and he was hired 48 hours before the five-star recruit they spent two years recruiting took his first spring practice. Mark, your your thought on that uh, carefully thought-out plan and the seamless execution thereof? I don't know if Jim Harbaugh is capable of this, but this is my suggestion. Spring practice is about player evaluation and the assessment of the schemes and how well they fit the talent that you have. So how do we go in those two different directions in regards to player evaluation and then the schemes on offense and defense? I think for Michigan football, of course, it's about that as well, of course. But it's as much about Jim Harbaugh's ability to evaluate his coaching staff and put them in a position to succeed. Because I think the count is six coaches, six new coaches. Correct. And most of them have never coached the position in which they are being asked to coach. Or coached I, in college football before. Yes, or been a high school head coach. Is, is that important? I'm not I'm not sure. Is that important? Well, this, this is maybe, maybe I've been in corporate life way too long, but they have management programs. So I, I would think that maybe some of these guys... And that's need, what Michigan is, correct? It's... it's, it's kind of a stepping stone job. It's, you know, uh, a, a cheeky, plucky little mid-major uh, where you go to kind of learn your wares on the way up, right? Like These Butler. guys need mentors. I think Jim Harbaugh should bring in, I think he should be going to any, any resource of a consultant mentor type relationship for a lot of these coaches to help them. Jim Harbaugh doesn't strike make- you as the mentoring type? He does not. I'm sorry. I've tried to keep a straight face for the last five minutes. It's getting harder. Finish your point, Mark. I apologize. I'm My being point is I'm being a douchebag. I'm just I'm I'm dead inside, Mark. I'm dead. I'm dead right now. I threw in the towel. My, My point is is that I believe that these guys have been set up now no exceptional people will succeed and fight through the myriad of bureaucracy or whatever's in their way, poor coaching, whatever, poor teaching, instructing, your star pupils are going to fight through that and succeed regardless. But I don't necessarily think this is the bunch. I think they're capable. They know football, but they know it on another side of the ball or another position or at another level. Uh, I think these guys need there can be mentoring and evaluation of the coaching staff and provide them with some resources to grow as coaches. I think there's there's room for that here. Maybe I'm thinking too far outside the box and, and thinking too much self-help, but dude, I don't know. I, I don't I cannot possibly believe the plan originally was see that that's the point that I made the last time we talked. Do we just do random acts of Harbaugh? We just do random acts. I have a hard time believing that we waited two months for a contract extension, which included a 50% demotion in pay. I have a hard time believing we waited two months from that for that. And during that time, Jim said to his boss, the athletic director at Michigan Ward Manual, dude, wait till you see the running backs coach I've got lined up to take over for quarterbacks two days before spring practice starts. I mean, how how do y'all do things at Ohio State? Is that what you all do? He has recruited five-star quarterbacks for two years. And then on the dawn of their very first practice, just kind of like, surprise, bitches, and just shock him and his old man with your brand new non-quarterbacks coach, quarterbacks coach, right before practice, you know, just to mix it up, make sure that they are on edge and, you know, they're prepared for anything. Is that what you all do down in Columbus? I don't know. That's crazy. It's crazy. The timing of it all, even if this had been – formulated and put into place a month in advance it's still okay uh it's still a little out there and you're asking a lot of these guys but yeah the the day of bob stoops that name just i'm just throwing out names that name comes to mind as bring bob stoops and i'm sure there are other and maybe even i wonder if you get to listen to bob stoops rip us in the film room on big 10 network and on fox this year in place of urban meyer and, ha- and, like and, and having known coming. Bob in the past, he'll be a lot nicer about it. 
<laughs> it will be. He's a nice family man. Yes. Bring him to spring practice, somebody of that ilk or multiple guys, just to watch what we do and watch these coaches work and help them in their new roles. I think that's what they should do. I, I, you are not the source I should be turning to for this, but this is how desperate this audience probably is. Okay. What are signs of optimism, Duck? Um, what, what, what are signs of optimism? Because I don't know what they are, so I'm asking someone else. Well, unfortunately, we get closed down to the practices from these teams, and we got to rely on the spring game. Pretty much, we got to rely on the spring game. So, man, my eyes are going to be on J.J. McCarthy again. I hate to throw it on one guy, but I'm going with your boomer bust, and I just think, let's win now. Let's go for it right now. Let's take our best commodity and unless he proves incapable of learning the offense and he's just not ready. And then you've got Alan Bowman. So that's that's a quality transfer pickup, no question. But I'm I'm on the JJ McCarthy train. I see this as a boomer bust season in a different way than you do, Steve. I still think it's gonna be boomer bust week to week. I think we're gonna see flashes of greatness and we're gonna see how did they just lose to Indiana by three touchdowns? That's gonna equal the seven and five ish season i hate life that's all i got for you i'm sorry i've got no secret sauce i haven't cracked the code i don't even think they're going seven and five i don't anyway we're a basketball school mark that's what i hear yeah yeah so it's okay i think good to see you again brother thank you very much all right steve enjoy the basketball and laugh at sparty ninth place i understand in the big ten (laughs) (laughs) joy there we go I knew you'd bring me back around. Thank you, brother. Good to see you. We'll see you. A thank you to all of you that support us via Patreon. Patreon.com slash Michigan Podcast. So many of you have asked for the last few years, hey, how can we support what you guys are doing? That's the best way is to support us via Patreon. There's three different levels that you can do that, but if you just sign up for the exclusive club at $5 a month, you also get reaction podcasts throughout the year, uh, as well as uh, our handicapping predictions. And right now we're in the throes of college basketball season. So thank you to the hundreds of you that are supporting us right now on Patreon. And you're welcome to do the same at patreon.com slash Michigan podcast. And this week's Twitter poll results. We asked you, what are your thoughts about getting Michigan quote unquote spring football practice reports? So-called 22.3% said, yeah, man, inject that into my veins. Turn it up. Is that freedom rock? 77.7% said, hell no. Do more, say less. Dude, the 22% of you that want that, that can take more of that, I don't know if I'm afraid of or for you. Because first of all, you have like, you don't have a digestive tract. You have a gizzard. Secondly, you just must be like, kick myself in the balls. I mean, you know, stiff upper lip. I'm untouchable. You must be like a total badass. To be a glutton for that. On the other hand, please tell me you're really not believing the hype. Please. You needed intervention. So badass or in need of an intervention, one or the other. And again, man, I'd love nothing more than like next Thanksgiving weekend. I'm excommunicated from Michigan fandom. My inbox, the comment section here, you 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 can't root for us anymore. You got off the train. You didn't believe it. Screw you. Go root for somebody else. I mean, I would love it if we're full of those comments because it would mean I didn't waste another football season. I just have negative integers optimism that that sadly is going to be the case. Which brings us to our feedback of the week. Michigan Moment says, hey, Sparty fans ripped Jawan Howard last season for finishing ninth in the Big Ten in his first year, which is where they're going to finish this season. Funny how things work out. Funny indeed, like funny haha, like Joe Pesci says in Goodfellas. Funny. Does that look funny? Yeah, in fact, it looks Ray Liotta funny. And I like the I like that look. Looks good on you, Sparty. That ninth place look, it looks good on you. Of course, that's probably where we're finishing in football. But that's not important right now because we're a basketball school. These are tears of a clown when there's no one around. That'll do it for this week's episode of Michigan Podcast. Next week, we break down Michigan's path to the final four. Until then, don't forget to follow us on Twitter for more nihilism. 
at Michigan Podcast. Uh, you can also uh, like, rate, subscribe, five-star review, whichever the case may be, on whichever platform it is that you may watch or listen to us. Thank you very much. Please do all of those things because it helps to get the word out to more and more Michigan fans where we can spread more and more of our hopeful, cheerful optimism. Until the next time, go Blue.